Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Erisat Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in genetics we will be talking about genetics evolution part 1. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. Varendra Singh Rawat. Dr. Rawat is assistant professor in department zoology in Hindu College University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you. Friends, today I will be talking about a very important aspect of uh, genetics which is the role played by genetics in evolution. Evolution as we all know is uh, basically accumulation of changes which causes speciation. One species might change into another species through accumulation of these changes. Now how these changes accumulate over a period of time, what are the various processes through which these changes, uh, uh, these changes accumulate and give rise to new species. The, uh, that I will be talking about in today's lecture. And the outline for the today's uh, lecture is that I will be discussing about what is the exact role of uh, mutation in evolution, what exact role mutation plays in evolution to take place and what is the role of migration in evolution. After uh, this particular uh, lecture, uh, the, uh, we should know how mutation and migration alter the allele frequencies in a population because as we know that one population is distinct from another population of a species in, uh, in the frequency of alleles which are present in those populations. And over a period of time the alleles might change into uh, new alleles uh, and they, they might gain new function and over a period of time one population of a species might change into another species through accumulation of these changes and alteration of allele frequency. So what exactly is evolution? Before we start with the uh, di uh, discussing the role of genetics in evolution, uh, I would like to point out, uh, discuss what exactly is evolution. <coughs> now evolution consists of progressive changes in gene pool of a population. Now gene pool is the sum total of all genes of all alleles which are present in a given population of a species and evolution is basically how how the uh, allele frequency of different genes change in a given population. And evolution occurs because of genetic variation in population. If all the populations are similar, then evolution cannot take place only because there is some kind of variation in allelic frequencies or types of alleles or types of genes in a population, then only evolution can take place. Otherwise, all the population would be similar. Now, Natural selection acts on these populations which are having var genetic variation and the best adapted organisms are selected through these, pro uh, uh, through these particular processes. Now the, there are four uh, processes which account for most of the changes in allele frequencies in a population. Any population can be, uh, can be said to, uh, uh, to be varying at a particular, uh, particular locus if it is having different allele frequencies. Uh, in different population for that particular species. Now there are four processes which are named here uh, which lead to change in the allelic frequencies in different populations of a species. Now what are these four uh, processes? They are namely mutation. Mutation as we all know is alteration of the base pair sequence in the DNA of individual. Only if a mutation occurs in the gametes then only it can pass from one generation to another generation. If it occurs in the body of the organism, it will not be passed on from one generation to next. So for mutation uh, to, be, uh, to be a process for bringing about evolution, it has to occur in the gametes of the, uh, gametes of the individuals of the population. Secondly, uh, second uh, process is genetic drift. Now genetic drift is basically a random change in allele frequency which is unrelated to any alleles influence on the reproductive success. Now, what does it suggest? It suggests that, uh, it suggests that the uh, genetic drift is a random process. Whatever allelic frequencies are present in population, they might get changed by a random chance event. It is not necessary that only those alleles are preserved which, which accrue some benefit to, the, uh, to, the, to that particular population. 
it is a random event it is a chance event any allele it might not be uh, very much uh, adaptable uh, to to that particular organism it might be deleterious also but that will be saved in this particular population and it will be passed on to further generation third process uh, which brings about evolution is migration migration is basically change in allelic frequencies which is caused by movement of individuals from one population to another population if there are two different population having different allelic frequency for a given gene locus if there is movement of individuals from one population to another population then allelic frequency will change over subsequent period of time and fourth and very important process is natural selection now what is natural selection it is basically basically a guiding force which acts upon the mutations uh, mutation produced in any population and it brings about a change in the allelic frequencies uh, by selecting only those uh, those alleles which provide some benefit to the organism that is those alleles which uh, which impart greater reproductive success or greater adaptability to the organism those alleles are selected and they are passed from one gen one generation to next generation so in this manner uh, the uh, the alleles which are beneficial they are passed on and allelic frequency changes in a population so these are the four methods which bring about changes in allelic frequencies of population namely migration genetic drift mutation and uh, natural selection now first i'll be talking about mutation what exactly is mutation basically it is an essential process in evolution uh, because it is the ultimate source of genetic variation uh, any genetic variation in any organism can be brought about by mutation only the process of meiosis which which occurs during sexual reproduction it br brings about recombination in individuals in the in the alleles of the uh, alleles of uh, specific locus but it cannot produce new uh, new sequence of nucleotides of specific allele that can only be done through mutation so mutation produces the raw material on which different forces of evolution will act upon and mutation occurs by change in nucleotide sequence of specific gene now it is not a very potent force as made out it is a relatively weak force for changing allele frequency because mutation rates in nature tend to be low and it occurs at random and most newly arising mutations are harmful to population and are eliminated in a few generations so though it is the most potent uh, raw material uh, raw material generating uh, process uh, it is not occurring very frequently and most of the mutations are harmful because any organism is already fine tuned to its environment and if uh, if some change occurs which which makes it not fine tuned to the environment those particular organisms will be uh, will be exterminated from uh, from that particular environment and they will not contribute their allele to the coming generation so most of the mutations are harmful and they are eliminated from the population in few generation and most of the mutations are recessive that is only when those particular alleles are present in two copies then only they will express their phenotype therefore it is difficult to observe the mutation rate directly in diploid organism because all the diploid organism contain two copy of one allele or uh, one allele at a locus and uh, if the mutation is recessive it will show its effect only when the two copies of recessive allele are present however there might occur dominant mutations also though the frequency of dominant mutations is very less and whenever such mutations occur they can be measured directly the rate of mutations uh, such mutations can be measured directly now for a mutation to be measurable some condition need to be met otherwise we won't be able to measure what is the mutation rate and what are these condition the conditions are that the mutant allele must produce a distinctive phenotype that can be distinguished from similar phenotype produced by recessive allele unless a mutant allele is formed which is producing a distinguishable phenotype we cannot make out whether uh, that particular phenotype is because of pre existing uh, mutant allele or it is because of a new mutant allele so a distinct phenotype is required for for uh, finding out whether uh, whether a mutant allele has formed or not secondly the trait must be fully expressed or completely penetrant so that mutant individuals can be identified if an individual is harboring the mutant allele he or she should be able to show the phenotype completely otherwise 
it won't be able to uh, we won't be able to uh, to find out whether uh, the individual is harboring those mutant alleles or not and third an identical phenotype must never be produced by non genetic agents such as drugs or chemicals so uh, this particular phenotype which is being produced by mutant allele should be its uh, specific or unique characteristics and that particular phenotype should not be produced by any other chemical agent otherwise we cannot say whether the phenotype is because of any chemical agent or because of mutant allele now mutation rates can be stated as the number of new mutant alleles per given number of gametes we can uh, we can uh, talk about mutation rates in these terms for example for a given gene uh, there is mutation to a dominant allele 4 out of 1 lakh births and uh, these individuals exhibit a mutant phenotype now we know that each individual carries two copy of a gene hence uh, the total number of uh, alleles which have been surveyed here is 2 lakhs because 1 lakh in 1 lakh births four individuals are exhibiting the mutant phenotype now if the affected individuals are taken to be heterozygous it means that four mutant alleles out of 2 th 2 lakh exist uh, we had four uh, individuals which were exhibiting the mutant phenotype and uh, these were out of 1 lakh individuals total allele surveyed would there, uh, therefore be 2 lakhs and out of these four alleles are taken to be mutant because we are uh, supposing that individuals who are exhibiting the mutant phenotype they are heterozygous so the mutation rate for this particular gene is 4 by 2 lakh which comes to a very low rate of mutation now taking another example suppose uh, we have uh, two alleles for a gene locus capital A and small a and frequency of capital A is 0.9 and that of small a is 0.1 in the population now we assume that capital A mutates to small a at a rate of 1 copy per 10,000 per generation so this is the mutation rate though it is a high rate compared to the natural rate but uh, it is falling within observed range and all, all these mutations which are occurring that is 1 per 1,000 per 10,000 they occur in gametes now how much does this mutation rate changes the gene pool in the next generation that is the question how do we find that out so hardy weinberg genotypes will be uh, finding out uh, what are the hardy weinberg genotypes in the current generation and because we have two alleles for a uh, for the given gene locus namely capital a and small a we'll be having three types of uh, genotypes namely capital a capital a capital a small a and small a small a the pheno, uh, the uh, frequency of these genotypes uh, are basically 0.81 for uh, capital A capital A that is dominant homozygous, 0.18 for heterozygous and 0.01 for recessive homozygous genotypes. With no mutation allele frequency in gene pool will stay constant that will uh, that is it will be 0.9 for capital A and 0.1 for small a from generation one generation to next generation there will not be any change in allele frequency but mutation reduces frequency of a capital a and increases frequency of a if there is uh, as we have said that there is one out of uh, 10000 uh, rate of mutation of capital a to small a so we see that if there is no mutation allelic frequency will stay constant but if there is a mutation then what is the frequency of capital a it can be calculated as such 0.9 is the frequency of this generation and mutation rate is 1 out of 10,000 that is 0 0.0001 this particular rate is to be multiplied with the frequency of uh, capital A for the present generation these many alleles are getting converted to small a so they will be subtracted from the total uh, allele frequency of capital A whereas in the uh, case of small a we are getting alleles uh, from a a type because capital A is getting uh, uh, mutating to small a type so the frequency of small a would be increasing apart from original frequency of 0.1 will be adding 0 0.001 0001 into 0 0.09 so this will be the new uh, frequency of capital a and small a it uh, capital a frequency would uh, decrease whereas small a frequency would increase so capital a frequency is 0.89991 and small a frequency is 0 0.10009 this happens when mutation is occurring so this particular figure encompasses what exactly is happening if there are there is no mutation 
uh, if there is no mutation from capital A to small a or small a to capital A, then allelic frequency stays constant from one generation to next generation. However, if there is a mutation that is uh, conversion of capital A into small a at the rate of 1 per 10,000, then in the next generation we will be having frequency of 0.89991 for capital A and 0 0.10009 for small a. And uh, if this continues, the mutation rate continues from one, this generation to next generation, then we will see that the frequency of capital A would further decrease whereas frequency of small a would further increase. Now, uh, to sum it up, mutation uh, as an evolutionary force does not bring about a very big change in uh, one generation. It needs many generation for allelic frequency to change. For example, it can be seen here frequency of capital A which was 0.9, it decreased only to 0.89991 in one generation and for decreasing it appreciably it would require a, 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 a great number of generation. So, uh, in this particular figure we can see that from 0.9 to reaching 0.8 it would require about more than 1000 generation. So, mutation by itself cannot bring about a very big change in the allelic frequency. As we see that after 1000 generation frequency of A has reduced from 0.9 to only 0.81. Now, talking about uh, further elaborating it, suppose frequency of allele uh, capital A is P0 and small a is Q0 and capital A uh, mutates to small a at the rate of U and small a mutates to capital A at the rate of V. After a single generation of mutation, capital A would have increased from P, uh, P0 to P0 plus V into Q0 because V is the rate by which small a mutates to A and small a would have become Q0 plus UPO. The change in allelic frequency of, uh, of uh, small a would be delta Q which can be uh, written as UP0 minus VQ0. If P was large and Q was small, then delta Q that is change in the frequency of uh, small a allele would increase rapidly. If Q becomes larger and P becomes smaller, then delta Q would diminish. This is the case of now talking about irreversible mutations. If frequency of capital A is P0 and a fraction U of uh, all capital A becomes small a, then P1 will be equal to P0 minus UP0 or P1 can also be written as P0 into 1 minus U. In next generation, if the same mutation rate continues, P2 will be written as P1 minus UP1 or it can further be compacted to P1 into 1 minus U. Now, putting value of P1 here, P1 values P0 into 1 minus U. If we put that value here, we get P2 is equal to P0 into 1 minus U into 1 minus U, which comes out to be P2 is equal to P0 into 1 minus U whole square. Using this formula, allele frequency in nth generation can be found out by using particular formula Pn is equal to P0 into 1 minus u raised to power n. So, this is for irreversible mutations. For example, uh, if there is a mutation rate of 1 into 10 raised to power minus 5 per generation, the allelic frequency will decrease by half its present value for every 69314 generation. Now, if we take human uh, beings having a generation uh, time of 20 years, then it would require about 1368280 years to reduce allelic frequency of any gene to half. So, if a particular allele A was fixed at the time of Homo erectus 1.5 million years ago, then at this particular rate, half of the allele present in present, uh, present human population would still be A. So, it shows us that mutation is a very slow process. Now, uh, if we consider initial frequency of A1 allele as P0 and A2 as Q0 and mutation rates are given here, uh, 5 into 10 to the power minus 5 for V and U1 is to 10 to the power minus 5. Then what are the changes in frequency of A2 alleles due to one generation of mutation when P and Q values are given, the frequency of capital A, uh, A1 and A2 alleles are given. Then they can easily be calculated by using the formula as I discussed earlier, Q1 is equal to 0.1 minus 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 0.1 and so on it can be done for all the, all the variables. Now, if what happens if the mutations are reversible, that is capital A is converting to small a and small a is converting to mutation uh, to capital A, what formula will be uh, using? Uh, for this, we will be using mutational equilibrium uh, formula and it is the point at which delta Q is 0, P 
P and Q are balanced in relation to their mutation frequency. So, for this we take U P minus V Q is equal to 0 or U P is equal to V Q. But we already know that the frequency of P is equal to 1 minus Q. Hence, we can put these particular values here and we find out that U can be calculated by using this particular uh, arrangement. And uh, further on we come to the conclusion that P by Q is equal to V divided by U plus V or finally we get P by Q is equal to V by U or P U is equal to Q E. So, P is the frequency of capital A, Q is the frequency of small a, U is the uh, rate with which A is get, uh, getting converted to small a and V is the rate by which capital A is uh, convert, getting converted to small a. So, in a population with forward mutation rate of capital A to small a that is U 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 and reverse mutation rate of small a to capital A with uh, mutation rate 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 the equilibrium frequency of capital A will be V divided by V plus U which comes out to be 1 by 11. With the above mentioned mutation rates, it will take about 63013 generations for capital A and small a to reach half of their equilibrium value. So, similarly we can see at uh, another question and we can easily cal cal calculate the allelic frequency at uh, equilibrium assuming that no other factor is working and it uh, we can calculate it by using p by q is equal to v by u and it comes out to be 6 into 10 to the power minus 8 divided by 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, uh, mutation alone is not a not a powerful evolutionary force, but mutation and selection together make a very powerful evolutionary force which can be seen in cystic fibrosis which is uh, which is uh, uh, which is a disease uh, caused by mutation at chromosome number 7. Though it is a deleterious uh, mutation and homozygotes rarely survive, this particular uh, mutant allele is carried out uh, carried from one generation to next generation and why it is so? It is seen that the frequency of this allele is about 0.02 in European. Can mutation rate account for this particular high frequency? It, it is suggested that there might be an heterozygous advantage and this heterozygous uh, individuals who are having a wild type allele and a mutant allele they might be resistant to typhoid fever that is why these individuals carry uh, carry the gene from one generation to next generation and that is why this uh, particular mutant allele is seen in such high such high frequency in european population so it has been experimentally found out that it is true that individuals who are having uh, who are having the uh, copy of this particular mutated allele they are more resistant to salmonella typhi bacteria and these results show that it indeed is the case these studies have shown that this is true and so uh, there is a balance between mutation and selection in evolution now another uh, another aspect of uh, another aspect of genet role of genetics in evolution is migration this particular photograph is computer generated which tells about uh, how uh, how an american individual would be in uh, uh, few uh, like few years of time because of migration of various uh, various uh, population from all over the world so this is a fake computer generation uh, generated model so migration is another force which causes a uh, change in allelic frequencies in population. Any species has a large number of populations which are having a large number of uh, variable allelic frequency. And whenever there is um, movement from one population to another population, there is basically change in allelic frequency of the population which is receiving the immigrants. Uh, rate of migration can be uh, uh, shown as fraction of genes on uh, island that are replaced by genes from the continent each generation if we are talking about uh, migration of individuals from continent to island and q i is the frequency of small a on island and q c q c is the frequency of uh, this particular allele on continent. So, after migration frequency on island will become q uh, double prime is equal to 1 minus m into q i plus m q c because fraction 1 minus m of the island genes are not replaced and among them the frequency of small a still q i change in frequency of a in one generation can be written uh, can be shown as uh, this particular uh, formula. If we take q naught to be the initial gene frequency in the recipient and q is equal to frequency of same allele in the migrant population and m is the rate of uh, proportion of the newly introduced gene 
each generation, then gene frequency in hybrid population will suffer a loss of small q0 equal to mq0 and gain of capital Q equal to m capital Q. So, after first generation of migration, we will be having q1 minus q is equal to 1 minus m into q0 minus q and so on it will continue for other generation q2 minus q will be 1 minus m square into q0 minus q. So, after n generation of migration, we will be having allelic frequency which can be given as uh, this particular formula qn minus q is equal to 1 minus m raised to power n into q0 minus capital Q. So, uh, here is the question if q i is 0.4 for a particular population and q c is 0.6 and 10 percent of the parents of the next generation are from mainland. So, that the migration rate m is equal to 0.1 then find out what is the change in frequency of q. So, it can be calculated by the above mentioned formula q i prime is equal to 1 minus m that is 1 minus 0.1 into 0.4 plus 0.1 into 0.6. 0.4 was q i and 0.6 was q c that is uh, the, uh, the frequency of q in continent. So, uh, summing it up we get uh, the frequency of 0.42. So, frequency of q in the island changes from 0.4 to 0.42 after one generation of migration from the continent to the island. Another uh, example is Rh blood group allele which is R0 in East Africans blacks uh, the frequency is 0.63. Ancestors of blacks migrated to America about 200 to 300 years ago and American blacks had frequency of 0.446 and whites at 0.028. So, what was the percentage of gene entering into the black population from the white population? So, again we use the formula 1 minus m raised to power 10 is equal to q 10 minus q divided by q naught minus q and we come to the conclusion that migration rate is 0 0.036 that is migration coefficient is 3.6. Uh, 3.6 uh, percent individuals or uh, percent alleles for this particular locus Rh locus entered into the black population from the white population. And we have excluded mutations uh, naturally occurring mutations we, uh, we are just talking about migration how it has affected the allelic frequency in the uh, given population. Similarly, there are other questions which can be solved uh, uh, related to migration and uh, these are the questions uh, which can be solved. Uh, if the allelic frequency is given for both the immigrant population and emigrant population as well as if the migration rate is given. So, this is uh, how uh, mutation and migration affect the allelic frequency in a population and bring about, uh, bring about evolution of population. Thank you. Friends, I will be talking about uh, genetics and evolution. What role genetics play in evolution of a population uh, uh, leading to formation of new species by change in allelic frequency and how, uh, how this particular process takes place. Basically, there are uh, four processes uh, which uh, take part in uh, evolution of a population and these are namely mutation, migration and natural selection and genetic drift. In this particular uh, lecture, I would be talking about how genetic drift and natural selection uh, play, a, play a very important role in bringing about, uh, bringing about evolution by changing allelic frequencies of a population of a species. So, the outline for this particular lecture would be I would be discussing about role of genetic drift and role of natural selection in evolution and after, after the lecture we should be able to uh, talk about how, how these processes of genetic drift and natural selection will bring about allelic frequency change in population and lead to evolution of population. So, the four mechanism of uh, mechanisms of genetics or uh, mechanism genetic mechanism which bring about evolution uh, are mutations and uh, migration, natural selection and genetic drift. Now, genetic drift is basically a random process which will cause change in allelic frequency without considering the usefulness or harmfulness of a particular allele. So, it is a random event whereas, natural selection is a directional event. It will only select those alleles which are beneficial to uh, that particular population which help 
that particular population to get more adapted to the environment and also which improves the reproductive fitness of that particular population for a given environment. So, natural selection will help in selecting uh, those particular alleles and over a period of time their uh, frequency uh, of those particular alleles should increase in a population. Whereas, mutation is also a random event and the mutation rates are not very high and uh, natural selection is required to act upon mutations for bringing about evolution because mutations are the raw materials they uh, because of mutation there is change in the uh, in the nucleotide sequence of genes but natural selection is the guiding force which will help to uh, filter out which are beneficial mutations and which are non beneficial mutations and other important uh, uh, part is uh, migration migration is basically movement of individuals from one population of a species to another population and because population over a period of time uh, they uh, they change uh, the allelic frequencies and if there is migra migration from one population to another population it would lead to change in allelic frequency of the population which is receiving the immigrant so all these four processes are very important for evolution to occur and i'll be discussing about genetic drift and natural selection in detail in this particular lecture so uh, pictorial representation of genetic drift can be seen in this particular figure and it's it shows that there are uh, flowers flower, uh, plants which are producing red flowers and white flower so in generation 1 the frequency of uh, capital r which is responsible for producing red color pigmentation in the flowers is 0.7 whereas frequency of small q uh, frequency of small r which can be represented as small q is 0.3 uh, the small r is the allele which which is responsible for uh, formation of non colored or white flowers only when it is present in uh, double copy that is in it uh, this particular uh, r small r allele is recessive allele and when there is recessive homozygous condition then the plant will produce uncolored or white colored flowers now if only 5 of the 10 plants leave offspring in this particular uh, population then the generation 2 will be having a uh, having an altered uh, allelic frequency now this particular altered allelic frequency is p is equal to 0.5 and q is equal to 0.5 now suppose from this particular uh, particular population only two plants leave offspring out of the 10 plants which were produced in second generation only 10 uh, two were able to leave offspring then we see that here in only the red plants are leaving the offspring and the, uh, the frequency of uh, frequency of uh, capital r which is represented by small p has become 1 and frequency of small r which is represented by q has become 0 which suggests that the allele capital r is fixed in the generation and the allele small r is eliminated from this particular generation now in in the further generation all the individuals will only be having allele capital R and all will be uh, displaying red colored flowers there won't be any uh, white colored flowers and that can happen only if there is a reverse mutation and capital R changes to small r so this particular example tells that if there is a population and only a limited number of individuals are uh, reproducing and producing offspring then allelic frequency will change randomly it will change from like in this example it will change for capital R from 0 0.7 to 1 and for small r it will become 0 0.3 to 0. So, there are various such um, examples in nature where this occurs and this is a highly random process. Now, what exactly is genetic drift? It is a random change in allelic frequencies in small population. So, the underlying, uh, uh, underlying words uh, are small population this particular phenomena is a characteristic of small population the degree of fluctuation of allelic frequency changes as the population size decreases the degree of fluctuation usually increase as the population size decreases. smaller the size of the population higher will be the degree of fluctuation of allelic frequency in extreme cases genetic drift can lead to fixation of one allele to the ex exclusion of another allele as seen in the previous example in extreme cases it might happen that one allele 
can get fixed whereas another will be eliminated. In this particular case capital R allele has got fixed in the population whereas small r allele has got eliminated from the population. Now what are the, uh, what are the various uh, mechanisms or processes by which genetic drift can occur? First uh, mechanism can be continuous drift, it can occur, this particular type of drift can occur in population that are always small in size, that is their number n is small. This can occur, uh, it, has, it occurs in uh, endangered species like Californian condor, Florida panther. It can also occur in insular species, that is species which are present, species population which are present in small islands or fragmented habitats, so that there is no regular migration from other populations of the same species. So species which are present in isolated islands, they tend to have small population and they uh, tend to get affected by genetic drift. Thirdly, even if the population is large, if the population is polygynous or polyandrous, that is polygynous means one male mates with a large number of females or polyandrous means uh, the females, uh, the females mate with, one female mates with large number of males. If such type of system exists wherein all the individuals are cannot reproduce, then this might bring about genetic drift. Example polygynous elephant seals where a male controls a harem and mates with all the females. Second way in which drift can occur is intermittent drift wherein there can be large fluctuations in population size from one generation to next generation and it is the generation wherein there is low population, low n means low population that causes the most drift. There might be uh, some population, natural population where there is random fluctuation in size depending on the environmental condition or depending on some proximate condition. The population size might increase, it might crash. And uh, whenever it is crashing, whenever the number of individuals is very low, some of the alleles which are present in those specific individuals, they might get fixed in the population and only those alleles will be carried on to the further, uh, to the uh, next generation and so on. So this is intermittent drift. Then third uh, aspect is, third uh, type is bottleneck effect. Bottleneck effect is when uh, the populations are reduced to near extinction. They are almost about, uh, uh, they, have, they are almost about extinct but then they expand to large numbers. So it is like bottleneck effect and uh, if so happens, the individuals which were the ones which gave rise to the increase in population, uh, whatever allele they are harboring, those, those will be transferred from that particular generation to the future population. For example, northern elephant seals, cheetah, etc. And last is founder effect. Founder effect is basically as the name suggests when whenever there is colonization, uh, it occurs in humans also but colonization if we talk about animal species, if, uh, if a new uh, habitable area is uh, colonized by uh, individuals from a specific population, suppose there is a continental population of a species and some of the individuals say four individuals uh, from this particular population move on to an island and establish a population over there. Now, uh, the population which is established in the islands will be having the allelic frequency which was present in the initial colonizers. So the founders, founder individuals, whatever allelic frequency they had, they will be transmitting uh, that particular allelic frequency to the coming generation. So this is termed as founder effect. So a small group of individuals which can, which become geographically isolated or a small group of individuals which colonize a new site, they can lead to a uh, founder effect and this particular uh, aspect can lead to genetic drift uh, and lead to change in allelic frequencies of populations. Now genetic drift is usually caused by natural disasters like a fire or a flood and it can cause evolution due to chance rather than natural selection. Whenever there is a fire, fire uh, causes uh, death of all the organism irrespective of, irrespective of their fitness to the environment. There might be few lucky individuals who might survive the, uh, this particular fire and those individuals who are surviving the fire, they will, uh, they will lay foundation for the coming generation and whatever alleles they are having, those will be passed on to the future generation. The left hand panel shows a figure wherein, uh, wherein stepping, of, uh, stepping of an individual on a population of insects is a random event and 
uh, this random event leads to crushing of green colored insect and brown colored insects are still surviving. Now the next generation population will be, uh, lay, uh, will be uh, given rise to by the brown colored individuals and whatever alleles they are having, they, that particular frequency will be uh, continued from one generation to next generation. So it is, a, it is an exclusive uh, random event and it can fix any, uh, any type of allele, whether it is harmful uh, to the individual or whether it is useful to the individual. The founder effect uh, is a very prominent uh, uh, aspect of genetic drift and bottleneck is also another important uh, way in which genetic drift can occur and these particular event least, uh, lead to change in significant change in allelic frequencies, random change in allelic frequencies. Now, the genetic drift is a phenomenon which can often lead to a decrease in variation. It leads to a decrease in variation. Why it leads to decrease in variation? Because the population, initial population which will give rise to subsequent generation, it is very small and the alleles which are present in this uh, small number of individuals, they will be passed on to the next generation. So the variation for a given a gene locus, the variation in terms of alleles would be very low. Now based on this particular info and what uh, we know about evolution, uh, what uh, do we think that genetic drift will help a population survive or will it cause the population to go extinct and if it causes the population to survive, why it will do so or if it causes the population to go extinct, why it will do so. Now, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll be uh, discussing this using certain examples. Uh, an example, one of the example is that of Florida panther, which is a pan type of panther found in Florida. This uh, particular uh, panther uh, population suffered a population bottleneck because it was hunted to about near extinction about 50 years ago. Hello. After that, there was an increase uh, in the population due to conservation effort and now there are about only about 50 to 80 animals for this particular species. Now this particular, uh, this particular e event had, uh, has a evolutionary genetic consequence. The consequences are as such, there is little genetic variation in the species, Lo it has lower variation than, all the, than uh, all the other panther species present on our planet. The lower variation today, the variation which is present in today's species, it is even lower than the variation in the, in the uh, gene lo loci uh, in the museum samples which were collected in 1900. Because of this low uh, variation, there have been certain problems like reproductive problems which also occur because of inbreeding because the number of individuals is very less, there will be mating amongst related individuals. So it causes, uh, it co uh, a small population uh, of any species leads to inbreeding also and 80% of the males of panther have low sperm count, 93% of the males of Florida panther have abnormal sperm which is highest of all the large cats. And they have a high frequency of king tail that is their tail is having a curve which is again a recessive trait and they have a congenital heart defect which is a hole in the heart of most of the individuals because of result of inbreeding which is brought about because of small population size. Another uh, very prominent example is that of cheetah, Essinonex jubatus. It also suffered a population uh, bottleneck. It, the number of cheetahs was about 1 lakh in early 1900, but near extinction occurred about a few, uh, some years back and the population reduced to about 10,000 to 12,000. In the present scenario, there are fewer than 10,000 individuals of cheetah. And again, there is little genetic variation. All the individuals are genetically identical and homozygous at histocompatibility gene. Now, these histocompatibility genes are the most variable genes in mammals, but in cheetah, they are homozygous. So this tells us how much, how much uh, genetic drift has affected the variation in the population. Uh, so much so that skin grafts between two cheetahs are accepted because they are genetically identical. Blood samples from 55 cheetahs from two widely separated populations were collected and they were found to be genetically identical. Only in highly inbred strains of laboratory mice has such genetic uniformity ever been observed. 
this genetic uniformity is never observed in uh, wild population but for cheetah it is a serious problem because the population is very small uh, there is a high rate of inbreeding and individuals have almost become genetically identical so all the individuals are similar if any disease occurs then all individuals would die there is no variation the species cannot uh, evolve or adapt to the changing environment so it might it will in fact go extinct in uh, time of uh, few years from now also the cheetah population again shows reproductive problems uh, there is the sperm count is very low and the count of abnormal sperm is very high so these uh, these uh, particular animals they will they have a high incidence of inbreeding and they are susceptible to a large number of diseases and they have a very uh, high chance of going extinct so genetic drift in essence it leads it does not lead to uh, evolution it it can cause extinction of a given population of a species or uh, an entire species in fact so talking about humans how genetic drift has occurred in certain populations of humans the pingelop atoll in western pacific ocean had about 9 surviving males in 1780 Uh, this particular atoll uh, suffers a large number of natural calamities like typhoons tsunamis etc and in 1780s out of 30 individuals nine males were present and 30 individuals had survived now the population has increased and it is about 2000 now in this present population about 4 to 10% is blind from infancy as they are affected by an autosomal recessive disorder achromatopsia which causes ocular disturbances and lead to cataract formation this particular disorder is extremely rare in human population one of the original survivors of out of 30 uh, in the in the year 1780 was heterozygous for this particular allele so initial allele frequency was 1 out of 60 or 0.016 and this occurred because of genetic drift random uh, random uh, selection of uh, allele now because of inbreeding this particular Uh, this particular allele has reached a frequency of 0.26 that is why such a large po- percentage of population is blind from infancy another example is that of dunkers which is an isolated religious community which migrated from germany to pennsylvania and this uh, the population of this particular group has increased only through marriage within group because they are forbidden by their religion to marry outside the group the frequency of blood group capital uh, blood group a in dunkers is about 60% whereas in usa and german population the frequency is only about 45% whereas the frequency of type m blood group in uh, in uh, dunkers is 45% whereas in usa and german population it is about 30% so this variation in the allelic frequency of specific gene has occurred because the, uh, because the individuals which founded the population their number was very small and whatever allele they had that got uh, the frequency got fixed in the population and another aspect is because of inbreeding this particular allelic frequency has continued unabated from one generation to next generation so uh, genetic drift is a non directional force and it arises due to variable sampling of gene pool by the natural events and extent of deviation for population can be measured uh, for specific allele by the given formula how much they are uh, how much they are deviating from the normal uh, frequency by using this particular formula sigma is equal to root of pq by n where p is the frequency of capital a and q is the frequency of small a and n is the number of gene sample whereas for diploid organism it is sigma is equal to root pq by 2n where n is the actual number of parents and this particular formula is the is for diploid organism if for if in a population p is equal to q is equal to 0.5 and there are two population of 5000 and two individuals what will be the difference in deviation we can easily see using this particular formula that sigma is equal to root pq by 2n the population which is having 5000 individuals it will be having lesser uh, lesser uh, this particular deviation from the normal frequency than the population which is having only two individuals because the denominator in the first case will become 10000 whereas in the denominator for the second case where there are only two individuals it would become four so the frequency uh, uh, frequency deviation of alleles capital a and small a would be higher in the uh, second case as compared to the first case so smaller a population greater will be deviation of allelic frequencies now coming to the uh, last uh, uh, last uh, aspect of uh, evolution uh, evolutionary changes uh, that is natural selection how natural selection leads to change in frequencies of alleles 
as we know that uh, natural selection is the driving force for adaptive evolution uh, and it rests on two premises that all organisms uh, produce more offspring than which can survive and produce reproduce and on uh, the uh, offspring which are produced and the organism themselves they differ in their ability to survive and reproduce and these differences are most of the differences are because of genotype now one assumption of hardy weinberg law is that individuals of all genotypes have equal rates of survival and equal reproductive success but that rarely happens in the natural population for example uh, if we take uh, an ideal hardy weinberg population of 100 individuals wherein p and q are 0.5 assuming that the previous generation mated randomly genotypic frequencies and number of individuals of each gen, uh, genotype in the next generation will be uh, uh, capital a capital a will be 0.5 square that will be 0.25 capital a small a would be 2 into 0.5 into 0.5 and small a small a would again be 0.5 square that will be 0.25 So, 50% of the individuals will be heterozygous, 25 will be uh, dominant homozygous, and 25 would be recessive homozygous. Now, suppose there is uh, there is a difference in the survival rate. That is, uh, individuals with different genotypes are surviving at different uh, rates. Then, what will happen? Suppose capital A capital A has 100% survival. Then, all the individuals, that is, 25 individuals, would survive if capital a small a has 90% survival then only 5, uh, 45 individuals out of 40 uh, 50 will survive and if small a small a has 80% survival then only 20 individuals out of 25 will survive and this will lead to change in the allelic frequency in the coming generation when these survivors are reproducing each will contribute gametes each will contribute alleles the total number of uh, gametes for one mating would be 50 25 plus 25 plus 45 plus 45 plus 20 plus 20. That is 50 plus 90 plus 40. 180 gametes. Now, what are the allelic frequency in the population now? The allelic frequency would be uh, for capital A. It would be 50 plus 45. 45 are contributed by the heterozygous individuals. 50 are contributed uh, by the uh, by uh, by the uh, dominant homozygous individuals. So, allelic frequency would become 0.53. For Q, it will be For small a, it would be one minus point five three, which comes out to point four seven. So these allelic frequency are differing from the frequencies we started with. That was point five and point five. So allele A, which had greater survivability, which had a, a better adaptability, that has increased. And the allele small a, which was causing mortality in the individuals, which was uh, not uh, efficient, uh, it uh, its frequency has decreased in the population. so natural selection is basically a difference among individuals in survival or reproduction rate of both and it is the principal force that shifts allelic frequency in large population in small population it is genetic drift whereas in small large population it is natural selection which shift the allelic frequency and is one of the most important factors in evolutionary change selection occurs whenever individuals with a particular genotype have an advantage in survival or reproduction over other genotypes which are present in the population the selection uh, 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 can vary from 1% to 100% for lethal genes uh, lethal genes might have different degree of expression uh, they might be completely selected against or they might have a, a, a lesser degree of lethality and uh, the degree of selection would be less in that particular case so individuals will select those individuals uh, which are showing better adaptability whatever advantages uh, are there in survival and reproduction they will be uh, translated into increased genetic contribution to the future generation and an individual's genetic contribution to future generation is called its fitness the hardy weinberg uh, analysis allow us to examine fitness if w is equal to fitness and s is equal to selection coefficient which is the selective force acting to reduce the adaptive value of a given genotype then we can see that fitness is equal to 1 minus s w is equal to fitness which is equal to 1 minus the selection coefficient which is reducing the adaptive value of a given genotype now uh, w capital a capital a represents fitness of capital a capital a and so on the other fitnesses are represented now if 
W capital A capital A is 1, W capital A small a that is heterozygous is 0.9 and W small a small a is 0.8 it means that 100% of the individuals of capital A capital A will survive whereas only 90% of capital A small a will survive heterozygous individuals will be surviving only 90% uh, of the total number and small a small a will survive only 80% of the total individuals. So, this is because uh, the selection is against a deleterious allele, fitness value of uh, W capital A capital A is 1, fitness value of W capital A small a if we say it is 1 and fitness value of W small a small a is 0. Allele A uh, small a in this particular case is lethal recessive, whenever it is present in homozygous condition it will lead to death of individuals. So, this particular case represent uh, how, how we can uh, represent fitness value of different genotypes. As the homozygous individuals, homozygous recessive individual will die without leaving offspring. Over a period of generation, the frequency of uh, small a will keep on declining and frequency of capital A will keep on increasing. And the, this particular decline in frequency of small a can be given by this particular equation Qg is equal to Q0 divided by 1 plus G Q0, whereas where uh, Qg is equal to frequency of small a in generation G. GQ0 is starting frequency of small a and G is equal to number of generations. So, this is how we, uh, we come to uh, we can calculate uh, using this particular formula how natural uh, how natural selection affects uh, uh, allelic frequency from one generation to the next generation and uh, will we find out that natural selection is a very important uh, very important process which leads to change in allelic frequency apart from mutation, migration, genetic uh, and genetic drift. Thank you. Uh, on that note, I would like to thank sir for this very interesting discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.